My boyfriend told me he has feelings for his ex and maybe even loves her. My boyfriend, 24 meters, and I, 21 F, have been in a lot of stupid fights lately due to his crazy outbursts of anger, for example he slams my doors, screams at me, breaks things, told me he hopes I rot in hell, says he hates me, you name it he's called me it. This started happening out of nowhere and he has been depressed for some time. But just a week ago he's like obsessed with me and you just never think any of this would happen. He's had a real rough childhood and depression and anxiety run in his family. He's been considering meds for a while and recently he made an appointment, it's tomorrow, to get everything started. Then today he tells me he isn't over his ex and might love her, going on about how kind and loving she is, how she read him like a book and always knew his next move, and then not even 10 minutes later he says that it's because his whole head is out of whack and he needs help with his mental health. What do I do with this? I've been trying to help him and I want to believe him so that we can stay together but that can't be from depression, can it? Will meds help him or do I need to just get him back to his ex? Too long didn't read. My boyfriend said things about not being over his ex and then 10 minutes later blamed it on his depression that he's supposed to be getting meds for tomorrow. Don't know what to do. He slams my doors, screams at me, breaks things, told me he hopes I rot in hell, says he hates me, you name it he's called me it. This is called verbal abuse. Abuse equals slash equals depression. Date less shitty boys. It kinda sounds like he is trying to get her to break up with him. Make her the bad guy so he can be guilt free, blaming his mental condition, and then get back with his ex. I had an ex who would act crazy, punch walls, scream at me, break his phone etc. I wouldn't break up with him and told him we could work on it together I would help him through whatever he was dealing with. I signed up to be a punching bag. Worst experience of my life. Even if he is just depressed and doesn't want to get back with his ex, he's being crazy. He needs to go figure his life out without making yours worse. Hey, anxiety and depression is no excuse for abuse. Get the hell away from this man and don't look back. I wouldn't put up such abuse from a partner and neither should you. In the early days of breakups they are always uncomfortable however there could be a much brighter and happier future for you out there. Good luck. I'm truly alarmed that you say you don't know what to do. He slams my doors, screams at me, breaks things, told me he hopes I rot in hell, says he hates me, you name it he's called me it. My friend, where are your standards? I'd be more concerned about him having some different mental illness that got wrongly diagnosed as depression. This doesn't sound like depression. I think he uses his depression to be abusive and violent and say whatever shitty things he wants to say. I don't think this is a matter of mental illness. He's just shitty. Partner tested positive for chlamydia, I tested negative. Long story short, me and my partner have been in a long distance relationship since September. And since we've spoken, my partner swore that she was loyal to me and only me since we've became official. I saw her on three separate occasions. Beginning of October for a weekend, middle of October for a week and for a week before the day of Thanksgiving. She told me the symptoms began early to mid-November and she discovered the STD after going for a routine checkup. She then notified me to get tested in which I didn't tested negative for chlamydia. I got tested at the end of December with our last encounter being mid-November. She tested positive at the end of December. The really odd thing here is that we've had intercourse mostly without protection. It was rare for us to use protection. Is there any way it's possible that she tested positive and I tested tested negative, she swears up and down that she was loyal to me, but this whole situation seems to defy logic. I would appreciate some advice on this situation on what could have potentially happened. She believes that a previous partner could have gave it to her, but the last encounter was in July. Is it possible for the bacteria not to expose someone until symptoms start? Please help! Exclamation mark. Too long didn't read, I would appreciate any and all advice. She is willing to take a lie detector to prove her innocence and we may just do that. Questions to consider, 
when was her last test before you? It's possible for her to be positive from before and not pass it on to you, especially if you're long distance and not frequently being intimate. It is much harder for men to contract chlamydia through heterosexual intercourse because the bacteria passes through the mucous membrane of orifices, mainly vagina and anus. Did you urinate soon before your test? You may be positive and not know it. False negatives are more likely to occur when using urine samples in men if they urinated soon before doing the chlamydia test. In the tests it is recommended not to urinate one hour before doing the test. How many times has she been tested since you've been together? False positives are error, but they do happen. Did you get tested before being intimate with her? Chlamydia can exist without presenting symptoms, it is possible you were positive without knowing. Have you taken antibiotics for a cold, acne, or other infection since you've been together? You may have been positive before, either from her or your previous relationships, and got rid of the chlamydia unknowingly while treating some unrelated disease. First of all, you got the test results from your doctor, call your doctor and ask them to interpret these results. Given that you're negative and your GF is positive, get a medical expert to tell you what's possible and what's unlikely. She is willing to take a lie detector to prove her innocence and we may just do that. Don't do this. First of all, it costs a significant amount of money to actually do it. But more importantly, you would be subjecting her to a humiliating interview in public. The operators of the lie detector device will be present, and that would destroy your relationship as thoroughly as cheating would. Just talk to medical professionals about the likelihoods, and make your decision, break up or not. Don't do this. First of all, it costs a significant amount of money to actually do it. But more importantly, you would be subjecting her to a humiliating interview in public, the operators of the lie detector device will be present, and that would destroy your relationship as thoroughly as cheating would. More importantly, lie detectors don't work. It's junk science. Up would subject his partner to all that, and at the end of it they'd have nothing but misguided certainty. Slash you slash portal please don't go anywhere near a lie detector. You may as well use a magic eight ball. My friend had chlamydia for over a year until she found out, she showed no symptoms. It's possible to have it and not pass it on, especially if you aren't frequently intimate. It is possible to have chlamydia without displaying symptoms for years to decades, so it's entirely possible she's telling the truth. It's also possible you got lucky in regards to transmission, having sex doesn't guarantee transmission. She was having unprotected sex any time in the last uh, 20 years or so, she may have caught it then. I'd be willing to believe her. She had no reason to tell you she had chlamydia if she was cheating and wanted to hide it. Some of the STDs can be dormant and even undetected in one's body. One might have contracted an STD years and years ago from a past partner, tested negative, because no test is 100% precise, and then passed it on to another person, or not. Guidance with major life decision, do I, 24M, choose dream job or girlfriend, 24F? My girlfriend and I are both originally from the East Coast and met senior year of college at an East Coast school. I studied computer science so it was agreed upon that we would both move to California after graduation so I could get a good footing in the tech industry, then move back to the East Coast after four-fifths years. I should also note, my girlfriend is extremely close with her family. Family, one of those small families that does everything together, aunts, uncles, cousins, grandparents in attendance at every single event, who all live in the same city within 20 minutes of one another. She calls her parents multiple times a day, every single day, to chat. There is absolutely nothing wrong with this, it's just a crucial point to consider as I explain the situation. Anyway. Graduation comes along and we're both still together, luckily both find jobs in California, and decide we should move in together to save on rent. Fast forward two years since moving to California, and I have relished every single day. I cannot believe how incredibly lucky I got finding the job I have. I have a very high salary, extremely relaxed position, incredibly empathetic boss, and huge room to grow and develop. I basically jump out of bed every morning because I can't wait to start work. Additionally, the company has exploded in growth since I've joined. We benefited from COVID, 
and I have already received promotions, and on track to work my way up the ladder and achieve a high position in a relatively short amount of time. To top it all off, I am an outdoorsy guy, so having access to world class hiking slash scuba diving slash trail running in California has been an absolute godsend. To sum it up, I feel like I'm living a dream, I truly have never been more happy in my life. Now in stark contrast, my girlfriend has absolutely despised California since moving. Mainly for three reasons, one, her job is the antithesis of mine, very low paying, toxic work environment, and no room to grow, two, she feels highly disconnected from her close-knit family I previously mentioned, and, three, she is a city girl that dislikes the outdoors, so she hasn't, and doesn't want to partake in any of the outdoor activities I do. I understand her hatred of the place, any person with her disposition would too. In terms of our relationship throughout these past three years, we have loved and deeply cared for one another every day. We continue to go on dates and keep the spark alive. She is truly a great woman that brings out the best in me and I could absolutely see a future with her but only in California. There is nothing wrong or unfavorable I find in her or our relationship. With this considered, she approached me a month ago and stated she cannot live in California anymore and we must move back to the East Coast within the next six months, cutting us two-thirds years short of the original backslash tilde five-year timeline we agreed upon. And now I am in the situation of deciding between a dream job slash life for my girlfriend, who I care and love. I am not looking for a definitive answer as to what I should do, more of guidance on how I should approach the decision. Here are some additional points to consider, she will, without a doubt, leave me if I say I'm staying in California. She does not want to try and find another job in California and stick out the next two thirds years with me. If we move back to the east coast, we would move to the city with her family. It's very difficult seeing myself having a life outside of our relationship slash her family, I have no friends and family in this city. The aforementioned city has very little job prospects centered around my industry. It also has little outdoor activity available. I won't name the city in particular but it's in the top 5 least outdoorsy cities. So I lose that aspect of my life. It also has very little job prospects centered around my industry. My work does a allow me to work remotely, but it will drastically reduce my chances of promotion and overall success at the company. I would also need to work west coast hours, on an east coast time zone, which is not ideal. If I stay in California, I could see myself becoming incredibly successful at my current company. I do not want my decision to leave creating resentment in the future. Thanks for the guidance, this decision has been ripping me apart the last month. Too long didn't read, been with girlfriend for three years, moved to California with stipulation we move back to the east coast after five years. Lo and behold I find my dream job slash life in California while girlfriend finds hell. She now insists we move back to the east coast within a few months. Do I give up my dream job slash life for her? It, thank you all for the guidance. It's exactly what I needed. I think I'll be moving on from her in the very near future. It's absolutely heartbreaking I need to do this to her, but I know this is for the best and we'll both recover eventually. Still, this is going to hurt like hell. You would be a fool to give up a dream life. You will resent her if you leave and it won't work out anyway. I think you should end this on good terms. Maybe offer to pay for part of the furniture if she helped pay for any. Pay for some of her stuff to be shipped home since you make good money. Just try and make this a good parting. 